What's up YouTube? It is Dusk. Today I have got several bits of information regarding the Clash of the Duel Masters pack. Or rather things to expect when Clash comes out. The first is information on the starter decks, which have just had their pictures posted recently. First one being Psychic Assault. An As you can tell by the back two cards, it's going to be another light water deck as um, the starter deck with Evo Fury was. Now I would go into General Finbar's abilities and stats into detail, but <clears throat> as with other structure decks, the Kaijudo logo is blocking out some of the information, so until I have all the specs on this thing, I'm not covering it. Just please wait until... I can get full information, then I will tell you everything there is to know about General Finbar. Same with the cover card for the next deck I'm about to show you. That card in the middle, however, Panopter, does have information. And I'll be getting to that in a bit. Now, you'll notice this with the next deck I'm about to show you too, but look at Piercing Judgment for a moment. Right under that level 4 and Civilization icon, you will see the coattail of a shield blast icon. So for these first two decks we not only get to know the name of our first multi civ spells, we get to know the name of our first multi civ shield blasts. The first one being Piercing Judgment for Light and Water. Now moving on to Sky Crusher's Might. This as you can tell by looking at the back two cards and many of the people in my area will be delighted to know is that we are finally getting a structure deck that is Fire Darkness. This pairing is popular as all get out in my area, but so many people are still iffy about getting into the game because they would actually have to get a lot of boosters to make a good fire, or at least a decent beginning Fire Darkness deck. This might actually change the, um, the player base in my area maybe jump us up a couple digits. So yeah, same deal with um, General Finbar, General Sky Crusher. I don't have all the information right here, so I'm going to hold off on info for that now. Though I will point out for this level 7 in the middle called... What is that? Is that an Elmo Galzak of Shadow Pass? A Sky Force Champion Armored Dragon. That's something I want to see. I want to see what this thing does as soon as we get the um, information on it. Now, moving on to cards that have come out. The first one I've got for you is Homunculon the Blaster. If you guys watched the show, you're quite familiar with this creature. But let's see what it does in card form. It's a level 5, 3000 Enforcer slash Megabug which is good evo bait if they give us a little more mega bug support in this new set because I mean even without the mega bug evolution Lepidos is amazing when paired with light and when paired with this card at that so yeah let's keep that in mind as a possibility Lepidos may be climbing back up in usage now before I go through with any of these cards I'm just going to point out all multi civ cards enter the mana zone tapped. So yeah, let's not waste our breath on that every time I show multi civ this video. Homunculon's two effects are stun and empower, both of which go off the moment he enters the battle zone. How they work is with stun, you tap an enemy's creature the moment he comes in the battle zone. We've seen this before in several cards, but not paired with this. Empower. When this creature enters the battle zone, choose one of your other creatures. It gets plus 1,000 power till the end of the turn. So basically, when Homunculon goes into the battle zone, you not only gain a body that has two routes of evolution at that, but you set up one enemy's creature to get ran over simply by making it vulnerable to attack and boosting up the power of one of your creatures to be able to smack it down to submission. I like this card. It's probably going to be 
nuts when we see the other cards Clash has to offer. Now, moving on to Panopter, one of the cards shown with the Psychic Assault deck. This is a level 5, 4,000 power, light water battle sphere. It is a blocker and a skirmisher, so we're keeping the best in the blockers thanks to light. Now, speaking of light's blockers, normally, as you guys know, their blockers are generally level times 1,000 plus 1,000 for power. Unless they're, like, really broken or the high-costing ones like Grand Gur. In this case, however, that plus 1,000 is a minus 1,000. Not the best when compared to the other things that light itself could offer until you consider this ability spy network which makes it more than worth it which states that whenever one of your other creatures that has blocker enters the battle zone you may draw a card now I'm not sure if this works in tandem with Rabu the Stormbringer who would therefore in theory make all of your creatures come out as blockers but I definitely see this bringing the, um, what's it called, the Rally deck back. At least making people tap into it again. I have one last card to show you guys, and then I'm out for the day. It is Memory Keeper. A light water level 2 Storm Patrol Cyber Virus. This is our first example of a multi civ vanilla. Now, while in Dual Masters, the Multisive Vanillas were basically like level 2 for 4,000 power, this time it's only level 2 for 2,500 power, or at least in this particular creature. We'll see what the other cards show us. But it is a freaky looking little thing. I mean, Cyber Virus needs support before it's a valuable type. Storm Patrol, however, we do have a bit of support for that. We could easily jump this guy's power up, set up early game to bring out a couple of these, maybe a, um, or scratch it, one of these on turn two, a Shock and Awe turn three, and then turn four, that thing that boosts all your other Storm Patrols by 2,000. Nice little bit of fun we can have with that. But yeah, that's all the cards I got for you today. I will see you guys later when I've got more information.